About a year ago, I was able to successfully build an 8 foot tall bike. At first, I thought it was pretty cool. However, I started to discover more and more problems over time. The main issue is that the bike is just way too tall. I decided the best course of action was to start from scratch with a new bike. So let's get started. For this project, I was able to salvage both male and female frames. Having a female frame on top of the bike makes it easier to get on and off. After making important measurements, I began the disassembly process. First, I removed the head tube assembly. Afterwards, I removed the seat post clamp from the lower frame. As you can see, I was able to perfectly match the outer diameter of the seat tube to the inner diameter of this tube. I was lucky to still have some rectangular tubing lying around. I will use it as a precise reference to align the two frames. Next, I used two washers, a clamp, and a block of wood to elevate the bottom bracket shell. This setup will allow me to align the two frames precisely. I then repeated the process for the upper frame. This method works because the bottom bracket shell has a consistent measurement across both bike frames. From what I recall, each bottom bracket is around 68 millimeters wide. To ensure that the bike frames were aligned with each other, I used the magic angle cube. Once the bottom bike frame was fixed in place, I attached the seat tube extension to the bottom frame. Then, I joined the two head tubes together using a pipe of the same thickness and diameter. Once the head tube extension was in place, I ensured that it was square with the bottom frame. I then tacked it in place. Finally, I tacked the tube to the top frame. Since the top bike frame was slightly smaller than the bottom frame, the seat tubes did not align. To combat this issue, I had to force the seat tube extension forward. The seat tube extension was necessary to provide enough clearance for the rear brakes. Then, I prepared to finish completely welding the assembly together. I had extreme difficulty doing this because of my shaky hands. Be careful when welding threaded parts because excessive heat can cause damage. It was frustrating to have to regrind the tungsten every time I dipped it into the puddle. Because I didn't want to modify the bottom frame, I had to come up with a complicated drivetrain to avoid interference. To do this, I made a part to adapt a third bottom bracket to the head tube. Later, I realized that I had welded it in the wrong orientation, and the threads were in pretty bad condition. Instead of reattaching the part, I decided to fabricate a new one. Personally, I believe this was the best course of action, as this is a crucial part of the drivetrain. After finishing most of the welding, I drilled out the tube that would serve as a cable guide. Then, I welded two pairs of three cable guides to the head tube. Finally, I painted the frame safety blue. The paint job turned out pretty well. As the paint was drying, I began the process of extending the steering tube. Once the steering tube was complete, 
I installed the head tube races by pressing them in with a threaded rod. Later, I installed a Shimano branded sealed bottom bracket into the front of the frame. Then, I installed the crankset. I repeated the process for the top frame's bottom bracket. The next day, I installed the fork onto the bike. I am very happy as the steering tube turns freely. Using an aluminum bottom bracket on a steel frame or a steel bottom bracket on an aluminum frame can result in the two parts chemically corroding together. That is why it is important to use anti-seize when installing a bottom bracket. Due to supply issues, I could not obtain a bottom bracket of the correct width for the bottom frame. That's why I am reusing the original one. To ensure compatibility with this bike, I'm using tandem bike shifting and brake cables. It is possible to crimp two cables together. However, using the proper cable is much more reliable. After routing the brake cables and the shifting cable, I began work on the most difficult part of this project, the drivetrain. First, I install the chain from the bottom frame bottom bracket to the cassette. Then, I install the chain from the top frame bottom bracket to the front bottom bracket. Yes, I know this is kind of confusing. To apply tension to the chain, I will use a chain ring. Finally, I installed a chain from the front bottom bracket to the bottom frame bottom bracket. To complete the drivetrain, I added the final chain ring chain tensioner. Despite its complexity, everything seems to be working smoothly. Just for fun, let's see how much this thing weighs. Now that the bike is complete, let's take it for a ride. Thank you for watching the video. Stay safe and fall for more projects.